Welcome to the THP Online Community. I'm Pastor Dallas, Online Community Pastor here at The Healing Place in Shreveport, Louisiana. Today, you're going to be hearing the next part of our series, Uncommon, with a message called Uncommon Moments Lead to Uncommon Movements. This message was really quite interesting, and it stirred a lot of people in the congregation on this particular Sunday morning into movement. Uh, the Spirit of God really fell heavy on people towards the service, and we saw some freedom take place in people's lives. And so we'd like to encourage you guys to listen intently to this message. And as you listen, feel free to respond back to us. Send us a message. You can email us at mediahub at thpshreveport.com, or you can obviously hit up all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for THP Shreveport. We pop up pretty quickly. I think you have to look for The Healing Place on Facebook, though. So that being said, we hope this message encourages you and challenges you. We firmly believe that the things spoken here on Sundays and Wednesdays aren't just for those who are able to join us, but also for members of our THP online community. Matthew 27. We're going to be in Matthew 27, 28, and Mark 16, and then uh, several other scriptures that, that won't be on the screen. Today I want to talk to you about uncommon moments create uncommon movement. You know, God has given us some incredible moments at THP, not just throughout the history of this church, but God has given us some incredible moments even recently. And that's given us an opportunity for growth and for movement. And so over the next several weeks, we're going to be sharing some exciting growth opportunities that are coming soon some things that we're going to be doing on Sunday mornings, some things we're going to be doing on Wednesday nights, and um, which are going to kind of coincide with school starting and all of those things. And we're going to be sharing some vision with you and and doing what what we feel like God wants us to do. One of the reasons why I'm bringing this word today is because I believe that we have We have become so accustomed to moments that we're only living for moments and we're not doing anything with the moments. It's almost like we come to church and we're ready for that moment. When is that moment going to happen? When is that song going to happen? When is that message? What scripture, when the altar call is is called, when when is that moment? I'm looking for that moment. And what happens is, is that God gives us all these incredible moments But we don't move. We don't grow from the moment. And then what ends up happening is we just kind of live from moment to moment, not growing in between moments. And then when there are no moments, we're discouraged because we haven't grown from the last moment. It's like everybody's looking for a word. Well, what was the last time, last thing God said to you? Grow in that. Everybody's looking for a word. Everybody's looking for a word. Everybody's looking for a word. Man, there's a bunch of them right here. But we're looking at it from some guy or some guy that wrote a book or some person that that maybe is hot on the on the scene right now. Somebody who's getting to preach everywhere. Just because you get to preach everywhere doesn't mean that God's blessing you. Listen, your gifts and your talents will make a way for you. Doors will open because of your giftings. Everybody realizes that, right? Your gifting will open doors for you. That doesn't mean that God opened the door for you. Your gift will open doors for you. And I keep seeing people kind of just living from moment to moment, but they're not growing between the moments. And God never gives us a moment. He never gives us an uncommon moment where he doesn't want us to grow and to move out of that moment. Every time God gives us an uncommon moment, he expects us to take a step to move. How many times did Jesus say go? He didn't just say it in Matthew 28. He would say, go and sin no more. Not just you're healed, but he would say, go and sin no more. Pick up your mat and go. Go, go. If you want to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. It's movement. Everything is movement. And the great thing about the kingdom of God is you can be growing and taking steps and still waiting on the Lord. That doesn't make sense in the world. But in the kingdom of God, you can be taking steps and growing in the Lord while simultaneously waiting on the Lord. You can be moving and still all at the same time. 
The Bible is full of those. If you want to live, you have to what? Die. If you want to be first, you got to be what? That doesn't make any sense. Of course it doesn't make sense. It's God. Listen, I, I'm right here, man, with people that have figured God totally out. I'm here. We, we, we get into this, this mode. We get into this mode of, of just moments. And, and you have this camp that says, well, they don't do this. And this camp says, well, they do this. And this camp says, well, they don't do this. And they don't do this right. And they don't do that. And they don't do that. And they don't do that. And everybody's talking about what everybody else is doing or not doing. And nobody's talking about what God is doing. Listen, I don't care what everybody else is doing. I care what God is doing. And what God is doing has no boundaries. God can still do whatever he wants to do. It doesn't matter what your interpretation of, of what God is or what he can. He can do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to make a donkey talk, a donkey can talk in 2018. If he wants to part waters, he can part it in 2018. If he wants to raise the dead, he can raise the dead in 2018. God can do what God, whatever God wants to do. But yet we, we kind of contain him into this little box. And I find that even within the context of what we know, that we can, we can contain God into these little bitty moments where we feel it. And there's nothing wrong with feeling it, by the way. God didn't create us to be mindless robot drones with no feelings. Does everybody in here have a soul? Right? you got some emotions, right? Some of you better say amen because I've seen some of your emotions. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with feeling it. Because God speaks to that part of us, the soulish part of us. God speaks to that and God wants that part of us. So that that can be submitted to him as well. But it seems as if we, we wait for these moments and then when the moment happens, we don't take it any further. We don't go any further from the moment. We just kind of wait for the next moment. Stuart Greaves says revival has been reduced to a manifestation culture versus a transformative reality. Like we live in this culture where we've reduced revival to a manifestation culture, a moment, rather than a transformed life. Revival is not about a moment. Revival is about a transformation. Revival is about not what happens just in the moment, but what happens in your life after the moment. And the moment is not always good. Uncommon moments are not always awesome. Uncommon moments can be loss, it can be pain, it can be heartache, it can be hurt. But God wants us to take that moment and he's trying to speak to us and then allow that to become a part of our life so that he can heal it, so he can transform us. God never allows a moment without expecting movement. The word of God is filled with uncommon moments which created uncommon movement, growth, a launching forth into the fullness of God. Moments that ultimately created a movement. Christianity was birthed out of moments. Like life-altering moments that launched people forward. Without movement, we simply get addicted to moments. And then when there isn't a moment, we're left with nothing. God gives us moments to create movement, growth. Why? So we can live a transformed life. I said it before, go and sin no more. It wasn't just about getting healed here. It was about living healed. It wasn't just about this moment right here, but it was about going and doing something from that moment. That's the way Jesus taught. In Matthew chapter 27 and verse 50. You want to talk about a moment. This is a moment. Matthew 27, 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Now we know this is Jesus on the cross. He's cried out. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now he has yielded up his spirit. 
Verse 51, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. How many of you know there was a little bit of movement out of that moment? And the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection. They went into the holy city and appeared to many. The dead are raised out of the grave and now they're walking around in the city. We only thought that happened in movies. No, no. Look at verse 54. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Like in this moment, now there's movement happening. Not just the earth, not just the dead, but two guards are sitting there going, this was the Son of God. We blew it. Now in Matthew 28, in verse 1, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, another moment, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered, And said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus whom was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. He said, come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly. Moment, movement. And tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, and behold, I have told you. Verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Do what? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now go to Mark 16. Verse 14, Mark 16, 14. Later he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes that is baptized will be saved, but he who does not will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any thing deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they what? Went out. Movement. They had a moment and now there's movement. And they went out and preached everywhere. 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 Notice they didn't, they didn't just think about where we need to go and what's the most comfortable for us to go to. It says they preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This won't be on the screen, but I want to read this. Here's what Jesus says. He's he's ascending. These are some of his last words. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He's talking about a moment. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Listen, a moment is coming, but when that moment comes, don't stay in that moment. You need to move. You need to take a step. We know in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit is poured out on the Jews, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayers. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now they all believed, all who believed were together, had all things in common, sold their possessions of good, divided them among all as any had need. So continuing daily... The moment happens, but they're growing. They're taking steps. They're moving. Listen, they didn't have time to stay in the moment. Notice when the moment happened when they were in the upper room, they didn't stay in the upper room to soak it all in. What did they do? They came out. They moved, right? And they did what Jesus commanded them to do. Be witnesses. 
It says, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God in heaven, favor of all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. In Acts chapter three, verse six, when it says that Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Matt just preached about this several weeks ago about the lame man at the gate. And that lame man at the gate, it, he didn't stay at the gate. He got up, he started moving. And when he started moving, Peter and John went with him and they started preaching. They didn't just stay in the moment. Peter didn't just stay in the moment and went, wow, wait a second, somebody get this on video. We need to put this on our website. They weren't waiting around because the people that were surrounding them were amazed at what they were seeing. Peter seeing that is like, okay, here's an opportunity, Holy Spirit. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit, not to just stand here, but to move, to do something with what God has given us. So Peter preaches, and what does that get him? Does that get him a huge altar call? It gets him thrown in jail. That's a moment. Moment, movement. What's the next moment? He's thrown in jail. And what happens? Name of Jesus, forbidden. You can't do it. Well, sorry. We can't help but speak. That's what we know to be true. Come on. So what happens out of that moment? In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were one heart, one soul, Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. All were possessors of lands and houses, sold them, brought the proceeds of all things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. So not only did they pray, but in that moment when God moved, then they did something with the moment. Like everything that you see, if you go to Acts chapter 5, and most of us don't want to read Acts chapter 5, especially the first part. Because Ananias and Sapphira are asked a question. Have you kept anything back? Basically, have you learned about generosity? <laughs> have you kept anything back? And we know that Ananias, he lies, he's stricken, he's dead. Sapphira comes in, hey, listen, your husband is outside, he's already dead, do you want to do this? Boom, she's dead too. That's a bad moment, right? So what comes out of that? Well, then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last, and the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her by her husband. But verse 12 of Acts 5 says, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers, believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out to the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at least a shadow of of Peter passing by night, by might, fall on some of them. Everything's moving. Like every moment that happens in Acts 6, it's Stephen all the way through Acts 8. In Acts 9, it's Saul becoming Paul. In Acts 10, it's Cornelius. In Acts 11, Paul and Barnabas at Antioch. And then they're first called Christians. Acts 12, Herod's violence. And we see that Peter has this miraculous freedom from prison. The church has been praying for Peter to be free. He's free. He comes and what does he do? Well, who is that? I think it's a ghost. <laughs> well, I think it's Peter. Really? Not that they had been praying for that or anything. Sometimes we're praying for something, but we're not really believing that God will do it. When God does it, we don't even recognize it. Come on, how many of you know that can happen? In Acts chapter 13, there's conflict at Antioch and the disciples were filled and the church grows. Acts 14, Paul is stoned. But yet out of that, they make disciples. In Acts 15, conflict, growth. Acts 16, Lydia is baptized. Paul and Silas are jailed. Right? They're in jail and there's a moment. Because in that moment, what happens? 
In that moment they're in jail, they decide to praise God. Right? As they're praising God, what happens? The doors open. And the jailer's afraid. Right? All the doors are open. The jailer's afraid. He's about to kill himself. And whoa, wait a second. Let me give you a truth. Let me give you a truth. And the whole household gets saved. Household salvation. Right? It didn't stop after that moment. The moment created movement. In Acts 17, Jason's home is invaded. And then you have the Bereans. And then the Greeks are saved. On and on and on, the pattern continues on and on and on. Uncommon moments create uncommon movement. And God wants to move today in your life. He wants to give you a moment, but he, was, he doesn't want to give you a moment so that you can now go, I can't wait for another moment next Sunday. He gives you a moment today to move you so that you take a step. That word that came, that came forth earlier about Feet in the water. If you want to get wet, you have got to move. I, I never understood why we would wait. Why would you wait? Why would you wait for, for, for the church to come up with a program that you could get involved with before you start getting involved? Why would you wait? Well, the selfish answer would be this. I'm going to wait because if it doesn't pan out, then I can blame somebody for not being involved. So you say, you're just saying that. I'm telling you, it happens. Some of you have been blamed by somebody else because you didn't teach a certain thing or you didn't lead a certain way or you didn't teach this class or you didn't lead a student this way or you didn't lead the kids or you didn't do this and you've been blamed for not discipling somebody else's kids. That's truth. Why would we wait? When your moment comes, that moment doesn't come just so you can sit and soak in that moment. That moment comes so you can now take a step out of that moment. Why is it that somebody that has an amazing experience with God, they're on fire for God, and then a couple of years later, not on fire anymore because the moment never took them anywhere. They didn't allow the moment to take them anywhere. Can you imagine if the apostles and the disciples never moved when the moment happened? We might not be here today. But when God gave them a moment, they took a step. When you read through the book of Acts, it doesn't say that they just sat there and soaked up a Holy Ghost moment. It says they, they continued in the apostles' doctrine, that they taught them that they taught and they raised up and they discipled. It was movement. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to this portion of our series, Uncommon. Here at THP, we believe that God is calling families to be uncommon. We pray for household salvations in our services and our prayer meetings on a regular basis. If you'd like for us to add your family to the list of families that we're praying for, please contact us via social media or email us at mediahub at thpshreeport.com. Our desire is for people to be who God created them to be, to know what God is saying, and to do what God says. For more information about The Healing Place, we invite you to visit our website, www.thpshreeport.com. Thank you for being part of the online community of The Healing Place.